Art Larry the Axe Koenig. And if you grew up in the 19, the late 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and into the 80s, you knew about Larry Hennig, then Larry Pretty Boy Hennig, and finally Larry the Axe Hennig. Now Larry is very, very proud of his Robbinsdale heritage. His very first coach at Robbinsdale, John Gorgilko, is here. Larry, you, you'd have to point him out to me. He's here. There he is. There he is. Sitting right over here. And we can give him credit for giving us the X. In the, in the 1950s, Larry Hennig started his pro wrestling career in a very first match in Mankato, Minnesota, 1957, against a guy named Billy Wicks. Now, Billy Wicks was a local guy, but he left and made wrestling history elsewhere. Larry Hennig remained, and in the 1960s, we remember when Larry Hennig was still what they called a babyface, a good guy, he wrestled in a lot of the preliminary matches, and in about 1962, he had a tour of Japan. And while he was on that tour, he gained a little more experience, he came back, and some really older fans will remember that Larry wrestled in some main events here in Minneapolis and St. Paul against a masked wrestler by the name of Mr. M. And Mr. M was Dr. Bill Miller, who was a very accomplished wrestler and veterinarian, a long time wrestling career. But Larry gained some real prominence and showed that he could be main event material. Then when you got to about January of 1962, the promoters had Larry team up with a guy named Duke Hoffman, and they won an eight-man tag team tournament in January of 62 and became the youngest ever AWA World Tag Team Champions. Holding that title for a while, when they lost it, Larry and Duke took another tour of Japan, and when Larry came back from Japan, he was slowly showing us that he was a little more aggressive, he was bigger, and he was a little more boastful. And he was actually referred to at times as Big Red Larry Henry. But it was about 1964 in October when something really big happened for Larry, pretty boy, Penny, he hooked up with a guy named Harley Race, who himself called himself Handsome Harley, and they were tag team champions on and off for about four years here in the Minnesota AWA territory. You guys that remember Larry Hennig and Harley Race will remember they had some classic ring battles with a couple of guys called Dick the Bruiser and the Crusher. And Crusher and Bruiser called Hennig and Race the Dolly Sisters. It was funny stuff, it was good stuff, but some great, great matches. Larry Hennig did a lot of tag teaming with other tag team wrestlers as well. He had a long run together with Lars Anderson, who became Luscious Lars when he was with Pretty Boy Larry. And then we remember about 1972, a guy named Dusty Rhodes came to town. And that was when Dusty was uh, in the infancy of his career. He was still a bad guy, Dirty Dusty Rhodes. He formed a tag team with Larry for a while. Then Larry disappeared for just a little bit. 
In about 1974, he was out east working for the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, which was the parent company to what is today the WWE. But during that 74 visit, Larry Hennig grew a red beard and started calling himself the X. When he came back to Minnesota, he still was a bad guy. He was feuding with Vern Gagne, long time feud with Vern Gagne, another Robbinsdale graduate. And he even took up feuding with Vern's son, Greg, who at the time I remember Larry calling Greg the son of Flicka. And he wrestled also against Greg's partner, Jumping Jim Brunzel. But a little thing happened on television in 1974. A tag team known as Nick Bockwinkle and Ray Stevens had taken on a new manager, Bobby the Brain Heenan. And during a match on television against Greg Gagne and Jim Brunzel, Bobby Heenan and Nick and Ray decided to take it upon themselves to try to injure Greg Gagne and Jim Brunzel. And they were triple teaming them. And then, out of nowhere, came Larry Hennig. Now, fans in the studio and watching at home, I'm sure they thought that Larry Hennig was coming in to join the action and take another beating on to Greg, but it didn't happen that way. Turns out that Larry cleared the ring of Nick and Ray and Heenan, and then carried the broken body of Greg Gagne out of the studio, later proclaiming that this could be one of his sons and he didn't want to see a young career ended like this. From that day until right now, he became the ex. And he was a good guy now. And then we saw Larry battling the likes of Nick Bockwinkle and Ray Stevens and Blackjack Lanza and all of the rest of the heels, the Super Destroyer Mark II, Angelo King Kong Mosca. Larry called him Ping Kong Mosca. So Larry was really, really one of the most popular wrestlers ever to grace the AWA wrestling rings from the time of his early career all the way to the end. But there was a special moment for Larry Hennig in pro wrestling. In the early 1980s, his son Kurt was starting his career. And after leaving Minnesota for a short time, Kurt ventured out to the Pacific Northwest Territory where Larry joined him and Larry had the honor to hold the Pacific Northwest Tag Team Championship with his son Kurt and I can only imagine how proud Larry was to have that accomplishment. When Kurt Hennig came back to Minnesota, he now had some experience and for those of you that followed wrestling closely, you know that Kurt went on to become the AWA champion for a short time, winning it from Nick Bockwinkel. And we also know that Kurt Hennig went on to become Mr. Perfect in the WWF. But most proud, I am to name and say that Larry Hennig, whether he wants to be Pretty Boy or the Axe, he is absolutely one of the kindest, gentlest guys you could ever meet. And I'm proud to call him my friend. And I'm honored that they're having a beer. The Axe is back. And with that, I would like to ask Larry if he could come up to the stage and we'll let you 
Beer from the Axe himself. A little bit about his family. This is a tremendous man, ladies and gentlemen. The way they used to do it on pro wrestling, they would say from Robbinsdale, Minnesota, at 275 pounds, Larry the Axe Kenny. of a Robinsville squad team. I'm sure you have it. I quit drinking 20 years ago and now I'm handling a beer. Can you hear me? Can you hear me on that show? First of all, I, wanna, I got a lot of stuff in here. I'm glad you want to listen to it. Carol, let's give the owner of the place, Steve, a good hand. He put all this together with Carol. I want to thank my friends, I want to thank my relatives. Uh, I figured out now how to get them out of the house. You know, all you have to have is a little beer or something. There you go. Oh, hold on a minute, I got a call. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I want to introduce to you the greatest coach, the greatest friend, the nicest guy I've ever seen in one of you. So I want to you. And Johnny left behind quite a few good kids too. And Larry's one of them. And uh, I was just a young coach. Trying to, I came in behind Mark Woodward and I was trying to make my own name. And there was my first game field. And a great wrestler. And there was a girl that always came up and was worried about him because he was so damn good looking and all that stuff. And I said, I mean, you got him under your face.
now on the special deal. I'm gonna sing a song for you people. But I've got a bad cold. I know it's gonna be Another grandson, that's a guy, I can't remember their name, so I read the number. I like this half of the room as well. Now this side says Yippee-I-O, this side says Yippee-I-A. Ready? And old council quit right now, when they the moon again. A power he rested as he went along his way. When all at once, when all at once is ready, he heard the red of cows and stuff. Cows and stuff. And a fucking cow. One more. Now the rain, the bright and shining rain, I will be tall. Larry would be happy also. 